This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got Andrew Snook back with me, a former reporter here from Smith Falls. Where are you now, Andrew? Hi, Kathy. Uh, I am now based in Mississauga. In Mississauga. Which was, uh, this is my hometown. This is where I grew up. I All ended right. up coming back here uh, after my wife and I got married and we decided to have kids. We wanted to be close to the grandparents, so we moved back to Mississauga. So Excellent, excellent. Now, the last time you were here, you literally got off a train, got in a taxi, came to the studio. Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the last time we really touched base with you. And I thought, oh, it's about time because you've been winning some awards, writing more books. So it's, it's about time we caught up with you again. Now, you did a bit of a stint here with Hometown News as well, too. I did a few articles with Hometown News back uh, in 2015, I want to say, when I had first got my first book out. Uh, and, um, and, and Trish over at Hometown News, she uh, designed my author website as well. Excellent, excellent. Small world, eh? It always comes around. It always comes around. Well, I've got three of your books. Thank you very much for sending them to me. Now, let's let's talk a little bit about Remy's Dilemma was the first one. Yeah. Oh, and then that yes. led into Remy's Dilemma Special Delivery, the second one. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about, you've done well with these. You've gotten some awards. I see some pictures in the background, some awards hanging up. Let's talk about them. Sure. Um, so this, the first book was released in 2015. Uh, Remy's Dilemma, and at the time I had just taken a job as a uh, full-time business-to-business editor uh, overseeing three different business magazines, and that took me to do a lot of travel across the country. Um, so I spent, you know, a week every three to four weeks on the road all over the place, all the provinces. I've even been to the Yukon. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of little nooks and crannies that, that people don't normally get the opportunity to go to uh, I was really fortunate to go and, and just travel all over the country uh, to job sites and um, to see uh, so many amazing things. Um, so I used that time uh, to write the second book. So, <laughs> so uh, at the same time that I had taken this job, um, my second daughter, Sophia, was born uh, literally like two days after I took the job. <laughs> she came early. And, um, you know, I had two, two little kids at home. I didn't have any time at home to be working on fiction, forget that. <laughs> so I said, you know, if I'm going to be going out doing all, these, all this travel, I'm going to dedicate all my time where I'm not working or sleeping to working on fiction. And for the next four years, um, while I was traveling for work, uh, air in, you know, airplanes, trains, uh, airports, train stations, hotels, I spent all my downtime putting together the second book, Remy's Dilemma Special Delivery. So that I put that together over three years of travel on the road. Uh, and then through the then another year edit going through the editing and the publishing process. Um, which is fun. It's it's kind of it kind of makes sense too, because these books are kind of silly road trippy type books. Um, so uh, and in the second book, so in the first I guess I should say what the first book's about. <laughs> um, so in the first book, Remy has a premonition of the world coming to an end. So he ends up, and he decides to go on a quest to answer man's greatest question before before the end of the world. So uh, he ends up on this ridiculous road trip through Ontario and Quebec, where he ends up causing total chaos everywhere he goes. And he ends up attracting the attention of a criminal profiler with the Toronto police, who profile him as a serial killer, even though he's not. Uh, and this ends with this ends up creating a huge manhunt for Remy that he's totally oblivious to the whole time he's on his quest. And you don't get to find out what the answer to his question is until the end. Um, so in the second book, uh, Remy, not to, I don't want to give away too much, but he is arrested for crimes he didn't even realize he committed in the first book. <laughs> and so he's taken into custody, uh, by a shadow arm of the government who has also misprofiled Remy, but this time they've misprofiled him as a criminal genius. And they've decided instead of, uh, giving him a, you know, a lifelong prison sentence that they'll allow him to perform uh, certain sort of underhanded tasks for the shadow arm of the government to uh, to earn his freedom. But Remy, at the same time, doesn't actually believe that this is the case. He actually thinks he's working for a shady pizzeria corporation. <laughs> uh, but it ends up taking him all over Western Canada. Um, and so he ends up in all over the place in Western Canada, uh, causing even far worse chaos, actually kind of like global scale chaos, um, Again, not meaning to, just trying to complete his quest, which like he thinks staying he in Canada. <laughs> and so, um, this the the first book did really well. I, I I feel like pretty happy with how it's gone. Um, 
you know, I've got like I've got my little I've got a little following of people who I appreciate who really like the books. Um, the second book came out at the end of 2019, and uh, you know, I did one book signing. Uh, pandemic hit. I wasn't going to do book signings again, um, and so I most of the books that I sell are in person. In, you know, at book signings, uh, you know, chapters or fan expo or independent bookstores. Because I, I get excited, I love to talk to people about the books, and I'd say like ninety five percent of the books that I sell are in person. So, try to trying to transition to online was a real struggle for me with the second book. So the sales were not great the last two years. I I really it, it was kind of I didn't want to complain a lot. I mean, it's just it's a book. We're in a global pandemic. I can get over it. <laughs> so, um, but like, but it was disappointing because I put four yeah. years into it and then I couldn't really get it in anyone's hands. Um, and then a couple, uh, in 2021, uh, the Independent uh, Publishing Book Awards ended up awarding Remy Sullivan a special delivery with a bronze medal for best regional fiction yeah. for Western Canada. That's so, yeah, the, the one at the bottom yeah. is, is from oh. Wisconsin. Okay, yeah. Eastern. So I won that and I was like, wow, that's so cool. Um, I was like, I was super thrilled because as an independent author, there's not a lot of ways to, you know, to gain any sort of recognition. You know, if you're not traditionally published, so to win that award and they're very well respected was was a big deal for me. Um, and then this year um, was, which was the final year I had um, to submit these books uh, to any award series. You only have a few years of a window uh, typically with any book, uh, and this was the final year for for the second Remy book. Uh, and the U.S. Independent Press Awards named it Comedy Book of the Year. Wow! It was like. Congratulations. Like, That's amazing. That's I, great. I almost deleted the email because I, I thought it was spam because it said, hey, congratulations, you're a winner. You're like, oh, great. Whatever. Yeah, yeah really? <laughs> and again, and I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. Wow. That, that's amazing. That's amazing. Good for you. Congratulations. Now, you've Thank been working on this one, too. So I've, I've had a couple. Where did you find time? Books. Yes. <laughs> so that is Dungeon Jess, the Ruby of Power. So I was a huge game book nerd growing up i loved like any books with dice rolling and monster battling i loved it those were like the first books i enjoyed reading and so i always wanted to kind of create one um and at the same time i was at home all the time because i mean i worked from home anyways I, I worked from home before the pandemic um but we're at home we have nowhere we can go we you know it's lockdown after lockdown and nowhere to go um and my toddler my son my third child uh was two in 2020 and he was doing what all my toddlers did at some point he decides to wake up at three in the morning and party until seven and he does that for like eight months <laughs> all my kids did this um and so i would wake up with him go downstairs you know give him ego waffles let him hang out and watch cartoons and when i'm sitting with him i thought you know like there's no way i could write another remy book in this kind of environment because we're, we're at home with the kids all day um i need more time to concentrate but i thought this kind of book where you're only kind of writing a paragraph at a time, I, I might be able to do this. So I took a notepad and a pen and I wrote the whole thing out by hand over about six, seven months um, while sitting on the couch with him at three, four or five in the morning. Uh, and so I wrote the whole thing out by hand like that. Um, and and I, I follow you on Facebook and you were, you were up at the crack of dawn, I, albeit I read it later in the day, but... <laughs> You've been up since three or four o'clock in the morning with your little guy and you'd be up yeah. writing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it was the, that was literally the only time I had where I might be able to write. And, you know, and because it's little paragraphs, you know, getting disrupted every 10, 15 minutes wasn't such a big deal where if I was trying to write an entire chapter of a Remy book, it'd be a very disruptive, like it'd be very, very difficult and frustrating. Um, so yeah, I put this together and I was really lucky. I had, um, I had met, the, the artist, Jeff Fowler, who wrote, he did all the artwork, the cover and the inside artwork as well. Uh, I met him, he was my booth neighbor at Fan Expo a few years back when I was exhibiting Remy and he had all this cool artwork out there. Uh, he does like a wide variety, he does like custom masks, he does like all sorts of art, he's just a really talented guy. Uh, and we got along really well and I, I asked him, I said, hey, I'm making this, I'm creating this book, Do you, are, you, are you interested? And he was. Uh, so he did all the artwork and then we were extra lucky because uh, a friend of his, uh, named Corey King is a comic book anchor and uh, he's done some really cool stuff. He's, he's inked for, for the spawn series for Todd McFarlane. Uh, and he agreed to take on the book and he inked all the artwork on the cover and in the inside, um, which was awesome. Excellent. So, Excellent. Yeah. 
it's uh, it's fantastic. There's about I want to say about ninety original pieces of artwork inside the book. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of drawings in there. Yes, like. Yeah. Anybody can see that? Yeah. And I, I mean, I just opened that up. Yeah. Oh, and, and that came with dice, too. So you got to play the games. So. <laughs> yes, you need dice. You need dice for this. Now, um, the books you sent me, too, came with this guy. Yes, that is. The, he is a caboose. So he is a baby grizzly moose. So in the first Remy book, Remy um, meets a grizzly moose who's like big and ferocious and mean. Uh, and just for a momentarily. And then in the second book, he befriends a baby grizzly moose that he finds at one point during his adventures and they become friends and it follows him through the rest of the book. Okay. And so it would be really fun. So that, that um, stuffy is actually based on some artwork. The artist, PJ Monfero, uh, who does the artwork for the Remy series, um, he had created some cute kind of grizzly moose pictures for my kids. And I thought it was really cute those those pictures and I said to him hey do you mind if I try and figure out a way to turn this into something like something promotional and he was good with it uh so we ended up turning it into a stuffy that was um that was made by uh, a company actually based in London Ontario um I don't want to screw up their names I'm gonna look it up right <laughs> well, this guy's got to follow follow back over to my grandson. He was with me when I opened up the books you sent me, and so he it's his now. But uh, I said I needed to borrow it for today, so <laughs> he's yeah, got yeah. a following. Well, it's, it's, custom, it's custom plush innovations in London that 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 did the design work and stuff for that. 